TommyHotTips.com and I wanted to show off my new gaming table that I made. I did solicit help, I'll be honest. And I wanted to thank Dave with MWG for his inspiration on how to make a gaming table. So I officially have it. This is the room where it's going to be in and where I'm going to be doing battle reports. It's the same room that I have my hobby studio set up in. And that's where I do my filming, my editing, my painting, my sewing. I do everything in here. This is my craft room. So I'm really excited. And now I'm going to show you how I did it. If you have any um, tips, comments, better ways of doing it, or if you've done one, or you want to do one, anything, leave your comments below. Like if you like, and please subscribe if you haven't already done so. So here we go. Step one, buy and cut your wood. You can have it cut for you at the hardware, hardware store, which is what we did. Then you're going to clamp down your slat so the wood doesn't warp, it keeps it nice and tight. Next, you're going to be drilling holes every six inches, and this is prep for the drywall screws that you're going to be using. Step three, make sure when you're drilling the screws into the wood, they go a little bit beneath the, the top surface of the wood. Be sure to do the same procedure for the shorter ends, clamping them down, making sure that your table doesn't warp. When you're drilling the short ends, make sure to work from the outsides inward. It's very important to reinforce all the edges so this makes your table very sturdy. Step 4. Mark both long sides every two feet. And this is going to be for the braces underneath the reinforcements to make your table stronger. Slide the first slat and match it up with the mark there and make sure it's even and matching the mark on the other side also. Drill your hole and then drill your screw to keep it in place. Be sure to do the same thing on the opposite end and then draw a line matching the two ends, the two screws there. And then every six inches or so, you're going to be drilling holes and adding screws. And this is reinforcing one of two of the slats underneath the table. Okay, now you're going to be working on the second slat. Do the same exact thing, drill holes, Drill your screws in there and then on the edge, on the sides of both slats, you're going to reinforce it there with the screw on the sides. Step 5. Brush on your glue mixed with water. You want to do 6 parts glue to 1 part water and then you're going to add your clay sand immediately after. We noticed that this consistency of eggnog worked really well. Pack it on pretty thick. We chose to do ours in sort of like patchy pattern because we wanted a sandy beachy look. So he's doing it in sections there as you can see. But you can do any pattern or design. You could do your glue and swirls and pack it that way. Because once it dries after a couple hours and you brush it all off, you'll begin to see the pattern of glue that we did. And here it is, ta-da! Next, go ahead and paint it brown or any color that you wish. I didn't show us painting it brown because it's boring. <laughs> So um, I'm showing the highlighting part of it. This is the fun part. You can really see the texture start to come out in the lighter coat. The darker that you see is just basically the base coat, the primer. And then this is a yellow mixed with kind of tannish, brownish color that we created. But um, you can go to your local hardware store and pick out all the colors that you want or just leftover paint you have around the house, which is basically what we did. Here's a hot tip, use the flat part of the sponge or brush that you're using and kind of tap it on there instead of painting it on there. Step 7, add your glue and grass. This part was so fun. So you're going to do the same consistency of glue, maybe a little bit thicker. And just kind of get in the crevices, again doing the, the padding type method. That way your sponge doesn't tear. 
and then you're going to shake on your grass. There's different um, textures of grass and colors of grass that you can get and I have all the links in the description of where you can find this, this products that we use. This was all the stuff extra, all the grass extra that we accumulated and it's, we still almost have a full jar. It's awesome. Step eight. Optionally, you can add bumpers on the bottom of your table. The folding table is not attached to our tabletop. That way it's uh, more compact and easy for storage. But our table was sliding around a little bit, so we added bumpers to the bottom and now it stays in place. We have, we have four of them. They're actually couch furniture um, feet. You can get them at your local furniture store or you can go to a hardware store and find, find something like it. Step nine. I wanted these for safety in case kids are around, running around the corners, edges. They're, they're very um, spongy and a breeze to put on. You literally just put the sticky stuff on, stick it on the edges, and ta-da! Isn't it beautiful? <laughs> Step 10, the funnest part, play a game! Now that I have a table, I'm going to be doing some great terrain tutorials coming up pretty soon. As you can see, our terrain isn't quite finished, it's bare bones. And I'm going to be basing the um, models that I currently have, they're not quite complete. But now that I have the table done, this opens the door for Hobby Hot Tips to do some great tutorials and some bat reps. So thanks for watching guys and stay tuned because I am going to be doing battle report on here, like I said, and also some tutorials on basing, painting, a um, bunch of fun stuff and make sure to go to your computer, because I know you're on your computer right now, hobbyhottips.com. Thanks for watching.